Hi, I'm Brian Waynes from the TV show Real Outdoors, filling in for Buck Lavasser. Put on your favorite fishing hat, grab your creel, we're heading for trout on the Escanaba River. Then it's off to the Zagola Sportsman's Club where I met up with retired CO Jim Dabb and State Representative Matt Hookey to talk about the proposed bill that would allow wolf hunting in the state of Michigan. So sit back, put your feet up, it's Monday night in time for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill Soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a long time lover of northern Michigan. Today's show is brought to you by Hiawatha Log Homes, building dreams one home at a time, and Wendrix Truss, keeping the UP covered since 1975. The sun is just beginning to settle into the tree line. The only sounds? A continuous rush of rapids in the distance and some birds finishing off the day. The water is smooth except for intermittent rings from surfacing trout feeding on the latest hatch of mayflies. You pick your spot, back and forth, and back and forth and let the line go. Your fly places perfectly. And then, in an instant, it all changes from the quiet, calm serenity of fishing to the adrenaline enhanced excitement of a trout thumping on the end of your line. There we go. Took right off the head of that rock. Now we got some rocks in here and I don't... Oh, is he a good one? He took the emerger too. Ah. Oh, oh, he's not pleased. Oh, that's a brownie. Come on, kiddo. Come on. Come on, come on. Oh, there's the money right there, baby. That's what I'm talking about right there. Whoa, pure gold, like I said, like a little kid. <laughs> They look like leopards. That's it, baby. That's what this is all about right there. <laughs> there are a lot of reasons fishermen fish with a fly rod. It's an art craft and a science all rolled into one. And it's an addiction. I had the opportunity to spend some time on the Escanaba River with fly fishing addict, guide, and owner of Caddis Shack Fly Shop in Escanaba, Chris Guestwicky. You can see rise rings, rise ring. There's about half a dozen or so fish out here that are starting to feed pretty active. As the sun dips down, you can see the shadow out on the water, the high sun, whereas if you look up there, the sun's still beating down on that water. The shadows are casting now. You can tell by the seagulls, the hatch is coming up river. Look, there, there, there's several fish out here. So we're going to walk real slow and real quiet out here. See that now? A second ago, these fish were just popping all over this, and we came out here soft, what I would call soft, and now they're just quiet. And that'll change here in a little bit, but there's still a lot of light. I'm gonna hang tight for a second, see if we can pick one up rising. Have you been dreaming of owning a log home, cottage, or camp? We are Hiawatha Log Homes, proudly serving the UP and satisfied customers since 1983. 
Our in-house staff of professionals are ready to help you create the perfect log home plan. Visit our website or stop by our model home and meet our staff. From cottages to castles, we can custom design to your specific needs. Hiawatha Log Homes, building dreams one home at a time. This portion of today's show brought to you by Superior Welding and Manufacturing, a proud supporter of the outdoors. In what we call the Boney Falls area, uh, down by what's referred to as the Second Rapids. It's a beautiful evening, just absolutely beautiful. Tons of fish rising, but you know, the Escanaba River is a below Boney Falls is a tailwater fishery and it has a just an overabundance of food as you can see by its size just plenty of space for these fish to live in just a beautiful beautiful area um, you know this section of river outside of the fact that it doesn't have a ton of cold water has just an overabundance of insect life crayfish I mean these fish in here hopefully you'll get to see just get so fat I mean they just eat and eat and talk about strong and there are some big ones in here too I promise you that I like to do a lot of streamer fishing but this year I got out early I had to try this new rod out and it's a four weight I haven't owned a four weight in a long time and I got the dry fly fishing with it and I forgot how much fun it was because I've been throwing streamers for so long, which I, I truly love to do. But I guess with the dry fly fishing, it's more of the art, I guess you might say. Quiet, soft, you know, the gentleman's sport. I guess a guy throwing streamers with a six weight isn't, so, uh, isn't always considered so gentleman-like. This is a lot more quiet, a lot more methodical. It definitely uh, requires a lot more skill, I guess you would say, than, than chucking a big old streamer. And unlike streamer fishing, I watch this float by and my heart's beating because I'm waiting for that strike. You can see it, it's kind of, it's the anticipation. The anticipation of what could come and then you see that surface erupt. The Escanaba River watershed is one of the largest watersheds in the Upper Peninsula, totaling 924 square miles and 508 miles of streams that flow year-round. This particular stretch of river is managed by the Escanaba River Association, whose mission is to protect, conserve, and enhance its trout fishing. Another one just missed it! The ERA is a non-profit group and the primary steward in managing the quality tour water section of the Escanaba. If I was a fish, I'd eat it. They stock trout, create trout habitat, protect the river and provide angler access to this remarkable stretch of trout water. Got involved with the Escanaba River Association and I'm now on the board of directors. I was just put on it. Great group of guys that really, really dump a ton of effort into this river. You know, they do things like uh, rock blockades out so they break up the anchor ice, which is a killer. Funnels and throats that are built to help disperse the, the cold water that is available. That's this river's main problem the lack of good cold water down here below Boney Falls, the tailwater. Oh, yes I am in a bad way. Wasn't what I was looking for. But that's another river habitat right there. And man, do they fight. Oh, not what I was going for, but I'll take them as slow as things been. Like I said, not what I was looking for, but I'll take them. You know, there's a big misconception because some of this stuff is expensive, but you don't need a gazillion dollars to get started. You've got rod manufacturers out there, um, Reddington, which is owned by Farbank, Sage Corporation. Um, 
that, that you can get into a nice trout outfit for a couple hundred dollars and get out there and go. And, you know, I, I get young kids in my shop all the time. Um, they look at these expensive rods and, oh, boy, I want one of those. But, you know, you, you ask them why or you, you understand their reasoning. They think that the, that the expensive rod is going to make them better. It's not. you got to get out there. I could do the same thing with a Walmart rod as I can with Sage's new one, the Sage One rod, which is $725 for the rod. I can do the same thing. Get out there and learn. Learn how to fish. Learn how to read the water. Know the difference between a mayfly and a caddisfly and a stonefly. Learn the basics. It's, it's, not a, it's not just the gear that makes this fun. As you grow, you start acquiring these things, but it, it's only going to be as expensive as you want it to be. You don't need to drop a fortune to get into a, a decent outfit. Um, and you look at some of these big companies like Sage and Winston, some of these big, what people know as high-priced rods, they're now creating a couple hundred dollar rods that you can get into and you, if, you know, if you, if you want to have the label, you can have it. Um, and they build quality rods all the way up and down. And waders, there, there's a lot of decent prices out there. You know, you don't have to have the, have the 100% Gore-Tex. And if you can afford it, it's great because they're fantastic, but you don't have to. You don't have to be intimidated by this and, you know, think that I can't do it because I can't afford to. Well, sure you can. Nice Escanaba River brook trout there. Got that sucker on the swing. That's a big, fat fish there. Look at the size of that thing. He inhaled my fly pretty good. Got colors on him. There he goes. Rookie. Oh, there goes the fly. <laughs> nice little 12 incher. The only thing that I noticed today, there's little stone flies coming out on the rocks when I walked up there and just put a stimulator on and boom. There he goes. See you later, buddy. Last cast, one last cast for the night, right? He's fighting like a brown, too. He just wants in the ground. Let's not lose this fight. I don't want to get the net off and jinx myself. Oh, yeah. Big brown, big brown, big brown. Oh yeah, this is what this is all about right here, baby. This is what this is all about right here. I'm not kidding you either. Oh, that's what I'm talking about right there. That is what I'm talking about. That puts us over to 20 inch club tonight. Our dog going close to it. Well, the day gave way tonight and the fishing came to a close. Once again, the last cast turned out to be the best. Well, at least till tomorrow's first. The Escanaba is a great river with great fishing. And like so many other places in the Upper Peninsula, it's peaceful. The art of taxidermy is the passion of North Country legends. Borrowing on decades of experience from some of the most accomplished wildlife artists in the country, each mount delivers award-winning quality and lifelike realism. Throughout the process, your trophy will receive meticulous care to ensure that you receive a finished piece that you can be proud of. 
Design assistance is available to help you select the perfect pose to showcase your trophy as well as custom pieces for the most discriminating customers. To find out more, visit North Country Legends at northcountrylegends.com. Visit the Real Outdoors Ultimate Online Sports Show to find great deals on a variety of hunting and fishing products and trips to great lodges and outfitters from across the U.S. and Canada. Open 24-7, featuring a variety of live shows throughout the year. The Real Outdoors Ultimate Online Sports Show. It's free and it's easy. Visit anytime, www.ultimateonlinesportshow.com. I recently visited the Segola Sportsman's Club shooting range where I met with Representative Matt Hookey and retired conservation officer Jim Dabb. We had a great discussion about the proposed bill that would work toward opening a hunting season on wolves here in the Upper Peninsula. In order for this effort to come to fruition, it desperately needs the immediate attention and support of sportsmen and women across the UP. And I've got to say thanks to you, uh, Representative, for the introduction of this legislation that you have uh, pending now on the on the gray wolf it's it's so vital for the wolf itself i believe that critter has got a, a place here in the upper peninsula but it's got to be managed scientifically yeah. um, the first target numbers were close to 100 animals here in the uh, up right and we've we've far surpassed those numbers which is a good yep. thing um, for for the uh, longevity of the wolf um, and sustainability of the wolf um, and now we've gotten to a point now where they're actually coming into human slash uh, uh, livestock type of um, uh, interactions and uh, I think we have to start looking at what are we going to do to curb that and that's where my legislation I think steps in. So I, I did resolution um, a house resolution 48 which was uh, to encourage the Congress uh, and, okay. and the feds yep. to delist the wolf well, that has happened now. Yeah, finally. Um, yes, finally. Which has gone, uh, a, taken a, a large step into the right direction. One of the things I'm finding, and, and I think uh, especially those who want to preserve the wolf, is one of the worst things we can have for the wolf is animosity. The last thing you want to do is tie a youper's hands. And, yep. and, uh, and that's what we have been doing. In the process, the wolf has uh, been gaining a, a, a more negative and more negative uh, um, outlook. And we want to make sure that uh, people can look at the wolf as a commodity, something that they look forward to a hunting season with. Um, and, and also uh, untie the hands, which we have gone a long distance in on the livestock owners, the, the, the yep. ranchers, to be able to, if there is a wolf causing a problem, taking down their livestock, that they have the right and the ability to uh, take that animal, the wolf, and um, uh, dispose of it. I think the bear was in a very similar situation oh, yes. at one point in time where it was fi uh, looked as a nuisance animal. No, I don't. It was trash. I, yeah, you don't hear of a bear being a nuisance animal really any, uh, anymore at this point. No. People uh, it's will. A tremendous game animal. Exactly, exactly. And I think we can do the same thing um, with the wolf and make it something that um, uh, this hunter, the sportsman, uh, looks uh, forward to. That's where the legislation that. Uh, the constitutional amendment, if you will, back in 96, proposal G. G yes. is good. Mm -hmm. And where that kicks in is to provide and mandate professional scientific wildlife management. And this is what the, the gray wolf deserves. Mm -hmm. It's a tremendous animal. There's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't deserve the animosity. Uh, minimum numbers are 700 animals. Yeah. I mean, and that's minimum a number. That's so minimum. you know that that number is above that considerably um, exactly. from the reports I get. You bet. I think we can manage those numbers and, and, and do it in a scientific manner where and then have a, a true discussion of what is a target number of animals we want to see here. The other thing though is uh, I think the wolf is a very smart animal. Oh definitely. And, and uh, because it, it hasn't had uh, um, a negative interaction as much with humans I think they've become much more apt to come into our neighborhoods much more apt to uh, like a gentleman I know from the Lawrence area. Um, he had his dog taken right off his back porch. Yep. Um, I think having a hunting season also would create that healthy fear of human um, uh, interaction that, that I think would be beneficial and healthy for the wolf um, and, and for long term. So I, I think there's many advantages of moving forward with this, I, it, whether um, you, you are a, a rancher, open up the door to you uh, being able to take care of the animals uh, yourself. Yep. Uh, having special permits for uh, special needs where you can take a certain number of animals around your ranch is I think a, a, another important tool that we can have. Um, and then just the overall hunt, hunting season um, will, will help reduce the numbers to a point 
uh, that's scientifically um, uh, proven that that would be a good sustainable number. And then uh, beyond that, help uh, alleviate a lot of the animosity that we're finding um, the wolf uh, come across at this point in time. Right, that's that's a big part of it. And that's, that's where the public can get involved right now, I think, mm -hmm. is by contacting your office, you uh, their own uh, representatives' offices, uh, Senator Casperson's office, and also the chair of the uh, House Natural Resources and, Envi and Environment Committee. Yes. Uh, that would be Representative Foster's office and encourage that legislation, that pending legislation, mm -hmm. get into, um, have a hearing in his Conservation Committee mm -hmm. in September. Mm -hmm. We can't wait until after elections mm -hmm. Because then uh, nothing's going to make it through the full legislative process this year, is my concern. And then we'd, we'd have to start all over again. Deer love apples. That's why the mighty Deer Lick Company created the original, one and only, real apple blocks for deer. Mighty Deer Licks are made with pure fresh apple and the perfect one-to-one -one calcium phosphorus ratio for superior antler growth. If you want big bucks with big racks, Feed Mighty Deer Lick year-round. See our live deer cam at MightyDeerLick.com. Mighty Deer Lick, simply the best. I know you were very involved in a committee that uh, studied the different uh, uh, ways of uh, potentially uh, uh, dealing with right. wolf populations. It's six years since we finished our wolf roundtable, which was uh, established to provide input from all the various uh, interest groups you bet. for the timber wolf, to provide input to the department on some recommendations for wolf management. Mm -hmm. And a number of those recommendations are already in the wolf management plan that the department has now. And all of these groups agreed that there had to be some management. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know that's where we're at today. Mm -hmm. uh, but the public has got to get involved. And that was a very diverse group of people, if I am, it was oh, informed yes. right. You I know, mean, the, we had... The sportsmen and women were yeah. represented. The uh, Michigan Humane Society was represented. Uh, the uh, Timberwolf Alliance was represented, Defenders of Wildlife was represented, uh, the native tribes from both the Eastern UP and the Western UP were represented. I think it was 20 or so different organizations that were represented. And before any recommendation went to the department from the round table, it had to be unanimous agreement mm -hmm. by those representing all the various organizations. I'm, I'm encouraging everybody to, that I speak to to uh, contact Representative Foster's number. Encourage the representative to have this hearing in September on, the, on your bill. Okay. And that's, again, House Bill 58... 5834. 5834. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And, and thank you for your interest in our wildlife resources here too. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Monday night right here on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering.